What's up everyone? Welcome back to another video. I just wanted to take a, uh, a moment to make a video about this special little box that showed up at my house the other day. Um, did not solicit it. I've done a couple reviews on some of the Adams products, uh, mainly their um, two different pressure washers they have. They have the Adams, I, man, I can't remember the names of them, uh, but two different ones. I'll link those down in the description for you guys. Um, and I loved them, uh, especially the full blown po professional grade pressure washer. I use it, um, it's, it's in one of my trucks. I use it all the time. Fantastic. So the other day I came home from work and this little box was sitting at the house and I opened it up and got a little letter here. Just a quick little note. Thank you for your reviews, Philip at Adams. Super cool. So, uh, uh, Philip, if you're watching this, thank you so much, man. I, I really appreciate it. I, it's really nice. You guys to send this stuff out. Um, I'm going to go through it really quickly, show you guys what they sent out. And then, um, I want you guys to comment down below, which things you are most interested in seeing me review and test and get my opinion on. Um, in today's video, we are going to be reviewing the foam cannon that they sent, which I'm super excited about. I've got a lot of people in the comments on my other foam cannon reviews saying, Hey, you know, test this thing. And, uh, I'm excited that it's here and that we're going to be doing that. So again, thank you, Philip. Really appreciate it. Um, let's go ahead and start off. We'll just do uh, now, guys. This is I'm gonna kind of do an unboxing show each product that came out. If you're if you don't care about that and you just want to jump ahead to the foam cannon portion, on the bottom you can click on it and I time timestamp it so you can skip ahead there if you want. But um, if you want to see and then make your recommendation on what you want to see me do a full blown review on, watch this. First things first, guys. I was really pumped on this. This is something that's just super cool. So. Check out this little coffee mug they sent. It's rad, right? By Corksicle, but you know, branded for Adams. Just a really cool little advertising piece for them, but I know I'm gonna use this thing a ton, so I'm super happy about that. It's got a nice little kind of textured bottom, so it sits nice and flush, but also um, isn't just porcelain or whatever this is. Anyways, super cool, I'm really pumped on that. All right, guys, let's dive into this. So next thing we've got is the Graphene Ceramic Headlight Pro Restoration Kit improves visibility and safety, guaranteed to outlast the lifetime. Wow, guaranteed to outlast the lifetime of the headlight when coating is applied properly. Obviously, guys, if you've ever done uh, headlight restoration, you know that it does come back, right? What you're doing is you're cutting through all that protective layer on the front that got all contaminated, where all that contamination, yellow, just junk sits. You're cutting through that, polishing out, making it look perfect, but that protective layer is gone. You can apply other things to help prolong it, but um, it typically comes back after a certain amount of time. This is a graphene infused coating to go over the top of it. Um, this includes the whole sanding tools and everything. So that looks super cool. I'm interested in doing a video on that. Let me know what you guys think down in the description. Um, should we do a full test on that? Up next, we've got a couple brushes. So we've got a tire brush, a little bit stiffer bristle for scrubbing out the, 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 the sidewall of your tire. And then we also have, I guess you would call this, I use them as a wheel brush. Um, it's just softer bristle, bristles. Load up your, your chemical on your wheel, scrub it out with this really quickly. Because it is softer, it fits into all the little tight spots. Fantastic, really cool branding. These things look fantastic. Um, they have a nice textured grip to them. Really nice. All right, next up guys, we have Adam's Graphene Tire Dressing. Full honesty here, never used this. Um, I'm excited to, because I'm excited to see, you know, just how long it actually lasts. I think Hawaii Tesla and detailing, um, I don't know his name, I've seen a couple of his, his videos. We seem to be on the exact same track a lot of the times. Um, we're just about on the same amount of growth on our channels. Um, he seems like a super, super cool dude. So if you, if you haven't seen his channel, go check him out too. Seems like a really nice guy, I guess, over in Hawaii. Um, and I think he did a review on this. Uh, again, I'm not sure, but smells like, smells good. It almost smells like some sort of baby powder-ish a little bit. Um, I don't know. My scent's not the best. So that's just, I'm thinking babies when I smell it. So anyways, guys, uh, really cool product. I'm looking forward to testing that out. Uh, then we have a couple more brushes. So let's pull these guys out. We've got a spoke brush for your wheels and tires. Not really tires, but for your wheels. Um, these are great. Oh, this is cool. This is a shorter one too. 
So, but this you're able to get into all of the different little um, spokes of your wheels. You can kind of get behind it um, as well and, and clean out the actual barrel of the wheel. Now this one's shorter, so it's a little more, e it's a little easier to manage, which is nice. And then we have interior brushes. We have two of each. So we have a small interior brush and then we have a regular interior brush. With brushes, guys, the main thing for me is always the, the type of bristle and the connection point of them. I don't like it when, you know, usually when you're using, using an interior brush, right, you're using it with a cleaner and sometimes they break down the, the, uh, the adhesion to the bristle, from the bristle to the brush, I guess, um, and they can fall out. Now this one, if I can get it out of here, tight packaging. It's cool packaging. It's just, man, it's, there we go. Yeah, this thing feels great. So this reminds me a lot of the Max Shine brushes. Um, a lot, a lot, but it's a synthetic and it is super, super soft. So it's really nice. These work great for um, your dash vents, all that kind of stuff. Some on the console, sometimes like between the shift boot or, or just the shifter and the rest of the console, stuff gets stuck in those little cracks. These typically aren't the best for that because they're so soft, it's hard to dig in there with it. Um, but for everything else, guys, these are fantastic. So we have the normal sized one and then we have a small interior brush. So let me just open this up just to make sure that's the exact same type of brush. And yes, it is. So there you go, guys. One's just a longer handle. Um, again, for interiors, most cases, I actually do like the, the shorter one. It's just easier to work with. Uh, the long one's great as well when you need that little extra length, especially between the seats, someone spills coffee or their, their drink, gets down the side of the panel, getting the longer one down and being able to clean all that out, stuff out is fantastic. All right, a couple more chemicals. So we've got total interior cleaner. Cool. Uh, we've got graphene detail spray. So that'll be cool to kind of check out as well. Um, let's just go and open it up real quick. It is sealed. <laughs> and again, guys, I don't know what my nose actually smells, but to me it smells like dog shampoo, um, which isn't a bad smell at all. It just reminds me of my pups. So I actually like it because I love my dogs. Uh, then we have graphene shampoo. So consistency wise, looks pretty good. Typical of graphene products, they do tend to separate. So I just flipped it over. You can see how clear it is down here and how dark it is up here. So you always want to make sure to shake up a graphene product to make sure it's mixed up properly. Um, so that's another thing we can look at. Now, does this actually add, it says contains graphene ceramic resins, helps to maintain and revitalize graphene ceramic coatings. Um, so that is typical of, it, it, it's a great way to wash your vehicle and maintain the coating that you have. Does it add a lot of protection? No, it doesn't add like, it's not like it's adding a full blown ceramic or, or a graphene coating, um, but it'll add a little bit and it will, help to preserve the coating that you have on there. Just about the home, oh, smells good. Just about the same scent. It's, you know, again, reminding me of, of my dogs. Um, does show smoke color and fresh, clean citrus scent. So, all right, on to the nitty gritty. Adams premium foam cannon. Here it is. Let's check this thing out. Now, again, guys, they did, they sent this to me. I didn't ask for it. So you're gonna get a completely honest review on this thing. I'll tell you what I think. I'll tell you right off the bat, my favorite that I've found so far, which I think most of these companies hate, is the MJJC Foam Cannon Pro. Um, all these big detailing brands um, make great foam cannons. It's just the MJJC for some reason gets more foam than any of the others that I've ever tested. So it is what it is. I'll link that video down below or up here or something to that foam cannon as well. But let's go ahead and open this guy up, see what it's all about and uh, see how it works. Alrighty guys, so for the Adams <clears throat> Premium Foam Cannon, a super high foaming solution, it says, um, again, never used this thing. Uh, I'm excited to try it out. So let's go ahead and open it up. It does show right on the side here that it's a 35 ounce canister capacity. Uh, fan pattern, dual weight adjustment. Dual weight adjustment typically means that you can shoot it, um, you can change the degree of the fan and then you can also change the angle of it, meaning you can shoot it vertical or horizontal, which is something I really like. Uh, let's see, air and water ratio adjustment knob. Set a little no uh, knob right on the top. 
uh, 5.3 GPM, 4,000 PSI max pressure. That is making me think that it has a larger orifice size, so we may need to change that out to work on an electric pressure washer that has a lower GPM and PSI, but we'll check that out as we go. Uh, and then quarter inch quick neck, standard, standard stuff there. So let's go ahead and open it up. So right off the bat, super nice packaging. Everything's in there nicely, kind of foam inserts to hold everything into place. Um, we do have our little card here, it says product, product information. And then safety precautions on the back, specifications, minimum to maximum water flow, 1.3 to 5.3. So again, I'm assuming that has a larger than a 1.1 millimeter orifice. So guys, if you are using a, a, a lower powered pressure washer, um, you're gonna wanna switch that out, more than likely. So first things first, bottle. Bottle's great, has a nice little grip. Uh, it, you kinda see the indentions on the side. I hope you can see that. Uh, there, you can see it right here. And those indentions have texture to them, so it's nice to be able to hold on to that. Um, we also have measuring components on the side here. Again, it said 35 ounces, which apparently is one liter. It's a thousand milliliters is 35 ounces. So uh, on the other side, we do have the Adams logo branded on there and it's not a sticker. It's sublimated on there or I don't know how they do it, but it seems on there very well. Not scratching off, good to go. Now you do have your uh, hose and, uh, that attaches to the foam cannon head. And this feels as though it is a silicone based one because it is super flexible and pliable. Now, it doesn't have any sort of weighted system on the back of it or anything, but it is nice and pliable. Let's go ahead and move on to the head of the unit itself. And this thing feels very, very robust and very nice. Super, super nice. Let's get this out of the way. Let's get in closer here. Okay, so here is the whole, no the whole nozzle. You have the Adams logo right there on both sides. Quarter inch quick connect off the back. Uh, this is your uh, water and air adjustment up here. Typically, you, all the way to the left gets less foam, all the way to the right typically gets more foam. Um, now, here is your spray pattern here. Let's see here. So you can change the degree of the spray pattern. It does change vertical and horizontal. Right, so here's your vertical spray pattern right there. And then you just grab onto the black piece right here and it's very tight. So that way you can turn it. Um, and although it's tight and that may seem like a downfall, it's actually not because that's the one negative I do have to say about the MJJC foam cannon is that it's the same type of mechanism here, but it's this second part to change it from vertical to horizontal is very loose, meaning if you just grab the front to change your pattern, this part usually changes too. So as you're trying to change your pattern, you're actually changing it to vertical or horizontal. This one, we're not gonna have that issue, right? This is pretty tight back there. So I personally really like that. It feels really, really good. Um, so anyways, when we keep moving on, you see that little, little knob on the inside. It's where you attach your hose. And this is just the soap pickup. Now you also have your standard threading on the outside that fits the bottle. And again, it's plastic on plastic, which I always recommend um, because that allows you to get, it, it, it allows you to seal very, very well. It lines up nicely. And in comparison to the ones that are brass thread on the top to a plastic bottle, you end up stripping out the plastic because the plastic is softer than the brass. You, if it's not aligned perfectly, you tighten it down, it strips it right out. So um, plastic on plastic is always the way I recommend. On top of that, you do have another threaded system on the inside, and this typically fits the 16 ounce bottles um, that they will give you. Let's see here. Graphene shampoo. Let's just open this up and see if it fits. Yeah, perfect fit. Not loose at all, fits in there super, super nice. So I do like that. Now this doesn't have the metering system that I've seen on other brands. I think Griot's had a metering system. Um, and so how fast you're gonna go through product, I don't know. We're gonna test it normally, like the normal way that I would always do, meaning I'm gonna test, I'm gonna put in a few ounces of product uh, into a normal, into this bottle, fill up the rest of water and we'll test it. So. 
Um, but really cool that it does give you that option. Now this is an Adams product, right? And now <laughs> if you're one of those people that like to stick with a certain brand, get this foam cannon, get Adams Mega Foam, and you're gonna have all the foam you want. Um, Adams Mega Foam is uh, the best foaming product that I've found uh, for a shampoo so far. Um, it gets the most amount of foam, regardless of the, of the foam cannon you're using. If you use it with the MJJC Pro, it gets just silly, silly amounts of foam. Well, t um, when I do my tests with all these, all these different foam cannons, to be fair and to be able to test them and get a consistent result, I use Mr. Pink. So I'm gonna be using Mr. Pink in this. Um, and then we'll, I, I don't have enough of uh, mega foam, unfortunately. I'm out of it because it's such a great product. It really is. Um, I'll link that stuff down in the description for you guys as well because it's really good. Um, I do suggest buying that in the larger capacity, like buying it in a gallon or half gallon because then the price per ounce significantly drops. If you buy it in the 16 ounce, it's pretty expensive. Um, but buy a gallon of it, you're gonna use it, right? It's a little more cost up front, but you're gonna use the product and it's fantastic. So uh, anyways, guys, let's go ahead and open this thing up real quick. Let's open it up, look at the components inside, um, and, then, and then we'll get to testing. All right, guys, so we're gonna go ahead and pop this thing open. Right off the bat though, I do wanna say that this is definitely not just an off the shelf uh, head of a, of a foam cannon. I haven't seen this exact style before. Always very similar, but you can tell that the pieces are actually different, meaning they get created molds and everything for their specific product. You can see it's stamped on the front as well with the Adams logo. Um, a lot of the ones that you find on Amazon will look very similar uh, kind of across the board, so. Okay, so let's get into this. Okay, let me zoom you guys in a little bit more. So you guys can see just how easy this is to actually do. Okay, so we have the head of our unit here, right? First things first, what we need to do is remove this quarter inch quick connect. So just take a wrench, it's very, very simple. Just fit it over that piece and twist it off. Some of them are on there tighter than others. This one is just on there perfectly. Now, one thing to note is this uses the shorter thread with an O-ring solution for their quick connect. Some of the other brands, especially the higher end brands, the MTMs and things like that, use a longer thread and no O-ring. And although, because they're more expensive brands, it makes me think that supposedly that's better. This, for me, is 1000% better. This is the way I would prefer it because then this actually seats in, compresses on that, on that O-ring and you get a nice tight seal. Perfect, right? So let me go ahead and grab an MTM over here that I have and I'll show you guys the difference and why I don't necessarily like the other ones and why I like these ones so much better. Remember, there is no thread showing, right? It compresses down on that O-ring and it's perfect. Now in comparison, here is an MTM um, and you can, I have the thing kind of taken apart right now, but here is the quick connection point. And you can see I had to tape it and you can see where all this white is, you can see all the thread is sticking out of it as well. And it's just, for me, for me, this solution is so, oh, I took it off, sorry. But this solution is so much better and seems to make so much more sense with the O-ring compressing in there. It's keeping everything nice and sealed. Again, the more expensive ones, for some reason, do this. For me, this is a way better solution. So good job to Adams for that. Okay, now that we have the quick connection point off, if you look inside, you'll see that little slot right there and the hole, that is your orifice. That is one, one aspect of creating more foam, um, especially when you're using a lower PSI, lower GPM electric pressure washer. So all you do is just stick your, your flat head into that little slot, comes right out. Now this is a nice robust size of a orifice like the whole piece, the component looks really, really good. However, the hole inside, it's hard to tell. Sorry, I'm gonna try and get that focus. Yeah, you guys can see right there, that little hole. Um, looks to be a little bit larger than what's per, what I prefer for my electric pressure washers. I always like switching out to a 1.1 millimeter orifice uh, uh, nozzle size or orifice size. So let me go ahead and grab one for you guys so you can see the difference. Okay guys, so here you go. So there's the original one. The, the, the hole or orifice there is larger than the aftermarket one. Um, and all these definitely look different in size, correct? 
as you guys can see. However, they're the same thread pattern and this should fit in there perfectly. So let's just test it really quickly to make sure. We just drop it in there, line it up so that we're not cross-threading anything. Take our screwdriver, put it in. Yeah, it fits in there perfect. So you can see it there. Fits super nice. Now what that smaller orifice does is it allows less water to pass through. So you're gonna get a higher mixture of soap um, basically the same kind of idea that this is doing, but this just takes it to another level. Um, so that is it there, guys. We're going to be testing this with both of those two different orifice. Um, but let's keep on going and opening this thing up so you guys can see all the components inside of it. So right off the bat now, there's this little pin on top here. We just take a screwdriver, pry that up, and then this whole thing should slide off. Well, should is a word. There we go. Okay, so this whole encasement came off. This is what we have underneath. Now, typically, yeah, this is one of those kind. Let me see here. There we go. So once that's on there, you can pull this part off. And this is where your little foam generating um, mesh filter is. So this is a very, very standard mesh filter. This is the kind that are in most foam cannons. The only one that I've seen that's different is that MJJC, MJJC Foam Cannon Pro where they actually use two smaller, thinner pieces with a, like a, 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 a fabric or foam piece in the middle of it. I don't know if that's what makes it foam so much more than ever, all the others, but that is the point of differentiation for me is that the, the, the a uh, little foam generator mesh filter here is different. But I just wanted to go ahead and show you guys how to pull this thing apart and, and show you what's inside. So now let's go ahead and put it back together. We're gonna start off with, uh, so to put it back together, you just take this little mesh filter, drop it back down in there, make sure it's sitting flush, push it back over. There you go, sits in there nicely. Put the this piece back on and then this piece is going to the, or sorry, the pin is gonna fit over this into these holes right here. So you just wanna make sure that you're lining it up properly. So that's kind of the hardest part of this whole thing is getting it to line up. Let's go ahead and try and put it in. We'll see if, it, if it's lined up. And not yet. There we go, boom. So we are all lined up. Once again, that opens up. This part turns in the back. We can go ahead and to start off, we're gonna start off with the original orifice that it comes with. Now, I don't know what size this is. It doesn't say, or at least I didn't see anywhere where it said, um, but I believe that it's a 1.25 millimeter orifice. That seems to be typical for the ones. Um, and the reason they do that is because if you're using a more powerful pressure washer, if you're using a high GPM professional grade pressure washer, um, whether it be electric or or gas, um, for example, their uh, professional grade one will work with this orifice. I still swap it out because it gets even more foam, um, but if you're using a, a gas powered pressure washer, this is the orifice that you would want. So keep that in mind. Again, if you're using an electric pressure washer, um, even if the pressure washer says that it's rated to 1.7 GPM, like the Adams pressure washer, or sorry, excuse me, Adams, like the AR Blue, pressure washer that I just did a review on, that thing was rated at 1600 PSI, 1.7 GPM, and it was actually getting about 1500 to 1600 at 1 1.125 GPM or something like that. So you can't always trust what they state on there. Those are the maximum numbers, and they don't always make sense to actual real, real world use. So pay attention to that. If you have any other questions about your specific pressure washer, check out my pressure washer reviews. I've covered a ton of them. Um, so you get to know exactly what the real world numbers are. But anyways, guys, now with all that said, let's go ahead and hook this up and test this thing out. In order to test this, I'm going to be using the Ryobi 1600 PSI, 1.2 GPM, little electric pressure washer, it's just a little, little block. Um, again, I'll have that link down in the description for you guys. It's a fantastic pressure washer for a hundred bucks. It doesn't come with all the bells and whistles, right? You don't have wheels, you don't have all the storage, but it does an amazing job. For 100 bucks, you can't go wrong with it. 
it has the same junky hose and pressure washer wand as the more expensive units do, which I, so I always recommend upgrading your hoses anyways. So it really doesn't make a difference. You don't look at the accessories when you're buying these pressure washers. Look at at least these uh, at home use really uh, consumer based pressure washers. Look at the quality of the pump and what you actually get out of them. That's why I review them to see what we, the actual uh, numbers are. So anyways, guys, keep that in mind. I, that's usually my recommendation. If you're looking at a, at a pressure washer from, those, from like a Home Depot or whatever, buy the cheap one, upgrade your hose, upgrade your wand. It'll make your life so much easier and you're gonna get good performance. So let's go ahead and we're gonna fill up. We'll do uh, four ounces of Mr. Pink and then the rest water and test it out. Again, using the original orifice that it came with. All right, guys, so here we are. I'm all set up. I've got my pressure washer all set up. Got my foam cannon from Adams right here, filled up with the uh, four ounces of Mr. Pink, the rest water. I'm running it to my pressure washer. I have my little stubby gun on here. And then again, guys, I am using an Uberflex hose. Really cool though. This is a red version. Doesn't kink, works really, really nice. They're super pliable. I love these things. This is a new option available on Amazon in this cool red colorway, and it's a 35 footer. So for those of you guys that don't need the full 50 feet of the blue one that I always recommend, 35 foot option is amazing. Still a buck a foot, so this comes in right about 35 bucks. Fantastic. So let me go ahead and turn on the pressure washer. Now again, I'm just gonna be spraying down my van here, guys. I know it's white, it's not ideal. But in order to, so you guys can see the, the, the best visibility of the foam. I'm just going to be spraying out that windshield so you guys can see it better. Uh, so anyways, going to hook it up and we'll get going. I'm going to make sure, check the spray pattern and we'll get going. So far, so good. I'm going to change the pattern to vertical. And as you can see, guys, it's pretty much shooting just water. And that's because I have the top loosened up all the way. I tighten it back down and we'll get nice foam again. So it is getting fantastic coverage. Guys, great, great coverage of soap on the panel. It is runny though, but I was expecting that. I was actually expecting worse results considering that it has a larger orifice in there. So now I'm gonna go ahead and change out the orifice to the 1.1 and test it again and see if we can get thicker foam. But regardless, guys, it's getting an amazing amount of coverage. Sounds good going through it. Um, it's good quality piece. Another thing, it is a wider based bottle, so it stands up nicely. Wide opening, so it's easy to load in your soap. Fantastic here. Um, I really like it so far. All right, guys, we're back. I just went ahead and changed out the orifice to the 1.1. That's linked down in the description. Let's go ahead and test this thing. I'm gonna adjust the lighting again for you guys so you can see better. Yeah, we're getting nice thick foam now, guys. Still a little bit runny, not as, not as much foam as the MJJC. Um, it may be something to do, I'm gonna test all this stuff out down the road. Maybe something to do with that filter, but it's definitely getting more foam production now that we switched out to the to 1.1 millimeter orifice. I'll keep going for you. Yeah, actually substantially thicker now that we switched out to that orifice. Um, again, still not quite as much as the MJJC, but it is doing a fantastic job. Adams, good job. Um, I, to be perfectly honest, guys, my favorite is still the MJJC, but build quality on this Adams product seems fantastic. Really cool color combination. Like, I, I really like it. It's a fantastic product. Again, if you want even more foam, Pair this Adams uh, foam cannon up with the Adams mega foam and you'll be dialed in guys. I just don't have anything with me, have any with me. 
um, but that stuff is super, super good. So I'll link that again, I'll link that down below for you guys as well. But that's it. Hope that helps you guys. Make sure to like the video, please. It helps the, uh, helps other people find the channel. Uh, make sure you're, you're subscribed and turn on that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming videos. We'll see you on the next one.